Hello everyone, I am Sada Shoro and welcome to Sada Learning Hub. Today's session, we are going to learn static control flow in object oriented programming Java. See this picture, I can explain how static control flow will work. Now, the compiler first checks identifications of static members from top to bottom. In our program, identification of the static members, where this is the identification of the static members, static int i. Next, execution of the static variable assignments on the static blocks from top to bottom. Next, executions of the main method. First, it checks what are the static members and uh, declarations and the static blocks and the static methods. See, first compiler checks, uh, uh, compiling the pro checking like this. This is the first static int, static int i is equal to 0. Now, up to here, it is checks first step this one. After this, it, it checks any static blocks are there or not. See, up to here, this is the static blocks. After it checks, is there any static methods? <coughs> this is the main method, which is the static. And this is also a one of the uh, method, method one, uh, uh, this is the static. This is the static block. After that, it is the static variable. Next, after that, it assigns the static values. This is the static variable i. I am assigning the value 10. After that, it calls the method 1. From method 1, it goes to method 1 method. It comes here. It prints the i value. Next, after return to method 1, uh, it prints the first static blocks. Next, the cursor will go to here it executes the static method it prints the here is the second static block next it will come to 12th step it assigns the static variable j value as a 20 after that it will be come into the main method and calls the main one method uh, the main one method is here it prints the j value after that it will goes to the main method end ending to the main method in this program first compiler identifies first identifies the static members from the top to bottom what are the static members are there from the <coughs> top to bottom next execution of the static variable assignments on the static blocks from the top to bottom third step execution of the main method finally it executes the main method if whenever we are executing this program the output like this whenever you are executing this program the output like this only java c base dot java compilation this is running now first it prints 0 after first static block next second static block next it prints 20 next it prints main method next i am going to discuss about read indirectly write only state that means r-i-w-o if a variable is in read indirectly write only only state then we can't perform read operation directly otherwise we will get compile time error saying illegal forward reference in this case, the compiler checks first identification of the static member from the parent to child. 
after that execution of the static variable assignments on the static blocks from parent to child finally it executes the child class main method next i am going to discuss about static blocks static blocks will be executed at the time of a class loading hence we if we want to perform any activity at the time of class loading we have to define that activity inside the static blocks static blocks will be executed at the time of class loading hence if we want to perform any activities at the time of class loading we have to define that activity inside the static blocks within a class we can take any number of static blocks and all these static blocks will be executed from top to bottom right the static blocks will be executed from top to bottom for example the native libraries should be loaded at the time of class loading hence we have to define that activity inside the static blocks for example if you see this example I'm creating a one class test I'm declaring a one static block here in this static block I'm writing near to library path see the native library should be loaded at the time of class loading hence we have to define that activity inside the static blocks like this next every jdbc every jdbc driver class internally contains a static block to register the driver with the driver manager hence the programmer is not responsible to define this explicitly we can write this code like this also this is the one more example r e g i s t register this driver with driver manager next without without using main method it is possible to print the some statements to the console yes by using the static blocks if you are using static blocks we can print the uh, some statement in the console without using the main method why because static blocks will be executed at the time of class loading that's why no need of main method if you see this example this is the class call test for example i can show one example here this is the for example google i am printing something here hello i can print after that i am exiting the program system dot exit of zero it automatically exist from the program now whenever we are compiling this program it prints the hello i can print but it doesn't have any main method next next i am going to discuss about without using main method 
without using main method and the static blocks it is possible to print the sum statements to the console yes it's possible see here in this class if you see this class i am creating a one static variable i it returns uh, i am creating a one static variable i this is the i i am creating a one method called method one it returns the integer variable integer value and the modifier is the static here i am calling method one whatever the getting value from the method one i am put it into the integer variable i see this method i i am printing hello i can print i am i am exiting the program after that one i am returning the value 10 now it it's compiled successfully whenever you are running this program it prints hello i can print if you come to this program i can explain the one more example here this is the static variable this is a t is the object type of test i'm creating an object of test class whenever we are creating a test class object it automatically calls the default constructor see this is the default constructor t is the class test is the class this is the default constructor whenever whenever we are creating an object of test this is the static modifier whenever we are creating an object of test it's automatically called the default constructor in this default constructor we are printing the hello i can print this is also possible to print the statements without main method see this one this is the one more example here this is the one more example here this is also same as like this like that only here this is the static object test i am creating an object of test class which is the modifier is static mm, this is the static block it is nothing but a static block whenever you are compile this program it prints the hello you can print without using system.out.println statement is it possible to print some statements to the console yes it's possible without using the system.out.println statement is it possible to print some statements to the console yeah it's possible why because System dot out dot print ln to print the statements in the console is same like that system dot error dot print ln. It is also print the statements onto the console. Next, these are the two statements are there to print the statements on the console. One is the system dot out dot print ln and another one is the system dot out uh, error dot print ln. It's out dot print ln, it gives the information and error dot print ln, it prints the error messages. Thank you so much watching this video. Hope this lesson helpful to you. Keep watching our lessons. Keep writing to us. Do not forget subscribe our channel Sadot Learning Hub because we have many sessions that would help you to develop our skills and I will be back soon till then you take care bye bye.